Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I have a walk-in freezer that's not temping. Uh, we're about 25 Fahrenheit. Obviously we're looking for zero Fahrenheit or lower to stay in the safe zone. So let's do our general checks. Both fans are running. That's a good start. Coil is frozen. Uh, sorry, I yeah, I don't have a great shot here, but you kind of get the idea. So this coil is frozen all the way up. The pan's a little bit frozen, so we can probably rule out uh, a draining issue um, so I'm just gonna jump up on the roof here I want to run a defrost there was no defrost clock downstairs um, so we most likely have it up on the roof here just hit fast forward kind of quickly and let's run a defrost and then we will troubleshoot what's going on so you can see here we're we're freezing up back to the condensing unit and you can see here's our defrost clock. And it looks like there should be four wires here going down to the coil. So three, four, and X. I do not have wires going down to the coils. And we should have wires on 3X and 4. N has power. That's our power in. So it looks like no defrost clock has been wired in. Uh, we have no defrost, uh, which explains why this coil keeps freezing right, up. So really interesting there. There's no defrost clock. So the customer actually said since they've got the unit, they've had to defrost it probably once a month. So it makes sense. Okay, so how it's currently working is... Uh, we have our incoming power, which is coming into N. And then from here, it's going into our terminal block. And then from here, it's going into our defrost termination switch. So how this switch works is, if we're above 35 Fahrenheit coil temperature, this switch is open. Once we're below, it'll close, and then it's going to send power to H4, which is going to power, uh, let's call it the L1 side of this, all these evaporator fans. Uh, yeah, sir, if you hear sniffling, my allergies are really bad today. And then our L2 is coming here into 4. And then 4 is powering the terminal block, which is going to power S. And it's going to come down and power our second side. So that's how this thing is working without a defrost clock. And obviously we need defrost. In most cases, 3-4 times a day, whatever it is. For me, it's going to be 4 times a day every 6 hours. Um, but the unit can still operate but it's going to freeze up every couple days. So in their case, uh, yeah, every, I guess every month they're not temping. Just clean this up really quickly. So what the game plan is, I'm going to remove N and 4 from the terminal block inside the coil. So we have our incoming power from, uh, we probably got some kind of junction box, and we're just going to run it directly to number 1. And this is going to run to number, or letter N, number N. Uh, letter N. And that becomes our L1 feed now. So this L1 now is going to come from what was feeding our coil directly. And then we still have wire 3, which we're basically going to wire right to terminal 3 here. Make it nice and simple. And then our X terminal is just going to come here. So we need a 4-wire conduit. We're going to break the incoming power. We're going to reroute. And we're going to send it um, to our coil and we're gonna have defrost. So let's go get this thing wired in. All right, as you can see, I removed my incoming power here. So as we determined before, uh, it's gonna be for an N. So you can see here, I have my two wire conduit and all I'm going to do is remove it. I'm gonna pull it back out through this liquid tight here. And we're going to go upstairs and you can see here, here's my two wire conduit. Let's just pull it right through. And we're going to run a fresh four wire conduit and we're going to wire it as per the schematic. There you can see the wires coming out. She's out of the liquid tight. And then the game plan is to bring the defrost clock right where I come up on the ladder. Um, I always see guys run the... Uh, 
running the defrost clock to the other side where the copper goes in. Like it doesn't need to be near the copper for an extra $15. I mean, like you can run some more BX and bring it right near that opening. So I don't even have to climb up. So uh, it's coming into that junction box there that you saw a second ago. Um, and we're just going to bring this power, this, this two wire conduit now is going to power our box and you can see here. So I've run all four of my wires plus the additional two incoming. So three, four X and N as we discussed earlier. And you can see I ran my four wire conduit, uh, all the way down to the other end. It's going back into my liquid tight and into our evaporator coil. And as you can see here, N3, X, N4 all have power now. Um, so that means we can power up our defrost cycle. And of course, hook up your ground wire. And here's just a look here of that wire coming through the liquid tight. So let's fire up the unit. So as you can see here, we're calling for cooling uh, 27 Fahrenheit. And let's just jump up on the box here. And across X and 1, we have uh, 208 there. So let me catch it one more time there. So 208, and then we're going to go across X and 3. So what happens here is when we move our defrost and the pin's going to hit that little, whatever you want to call it, actuator, um, we're going to get voltage on X and 3, which means we're initiating a defrost. So let's wait till we get 208 here. And there we go. So you heard it click. We got 206, so that means we are in a defrost right now. X and 3 have power. And when we have a defrost, it's going to kill power to the controller. So that's how we know we're in a defrost. And we're just going to go ahead and test all our elements because they've never worked before. Uh, let's just make sure all four are pulling. So we have 2.8 in the pan, 2.8 on the highest element. And you can already see the steam coming off. Um, and it actually, it's smelling almost like burning. It's because this element's never been ran before. It's still all got the dust and the oil, probably from the factory or whatever. But um, yeah, it's it's a little bit smelly in here. But that's all right. And let's see if we can peg off our last element here, which is right there. And we're getting 2.8 on that one. So all our elements are pulling. That's good news. Um, you can see there, there's ice on the coil behind the fan. But I want to run a defrost just to make sure it's going to clear the coil uh, before we come out of our defrost termination. Back of the coil is almost completely cleared. So this, this defrost is, uh, is kicking butt here. Uh, we're steaming. That's good. And if we just come around here, as you can see, all the U-bends are still frosted up. But I'll try to get a good shot here. So here's our three wire defrost termination. So that it's going to determine when we come out of defrost and when our vapor fans will turn on. And there we go. Uh, we're calling for cooling again, 25.7 Fahrenheit. And as you can see, uh, shiny copper there. So our defrost worked. It is operating correctly. Both sides are clear everything distributor txv everything's good no more signs of frost and the back of our coil is all good uh we are free of any frost or ice all right so let me go over this um i'll try my best to explain this but basically as you can see there we had power from n and four which is coming directly from our defrost clock so they're coming off of um right here four and N, and that's just gonna power up our circuit. So I already showed earlier how the fans are getting powered up. So we're just coming through here, all good. This whole section here is getting power. And then, so as I showed earlier, four is powering up the other side of the fans. And this is just gonna come through here. So that's all good. All right, so as we showed earlier, we had power on four and N, 208. And then when I advanced the time clock and that little pin hit the uh, actuator there, uh, we lost power on 4, and then we had power on N and 3. All right, so let's just quickly go over the sequence, how we're getting power. So that's our incoming power here, which we 
got from the uh, incoming power for the evapor coil, which we broke that power. It's coming through pin four here. This is normally closed, as you can see. Okay, and what determines if it's normally closed is uh, what position that defrost clock is in. So when we advance the defrost clock, this switch becomes open. So this switch is now open. And what's happening now is our pin three is actually getting power through here. This is closing because that pin that's in the defrost clock that I advanced is closing these contacts. Okay, and once pin three is hot, it's going to bring power onto here. So pin four is no longer hot. All right, let me just clean this up really quickly again. And now our pin three is now hot. So that's gonna come through here and that's coming right through here and this is our heater circuit. Okay, and then this whole side of the heater circuit now is gonna get power. Okay, we obviously need the second leg, which is gonna be N. N still has power that we determined over here. N never lost power. We just lost power on four. So N's going to come through here and it's going to power pin H2. H2 is going to jump her to H3 and now we have a completed circuit and we have power and our elements are drawing and our elements will continue to draw power until our defrost is terminated. So in this case, I've probably set the clock for 45 minutes or if our defrost termination switch terminates the defrost. So what happens is in here, we're normally open. Once we get our coil temperature to, in this case, I believe it'll be 55, it'll close this switch here. Once you get power on X connected here, okay, this is gonna take everything out of defrost. Let me just clean this up really quickly. Okay, so what happens is once we get power on X, we know we have power on three because our defrost pin is uh, on that little actuator, we get power here. So once we get power, Right here, it's gonna open up this switch right here. And once this switch opens, okay, it's gonna close this one right here. And then we're going back uh, into cooling mode. Okay, so once we have power on X, once again, anytime we have power on X, it's gonna open this relay and close that one. Okay, so the reason for that is, uh, if we have a 45 minute defrost, and our coil is defrosted. We don't want to continue to make steam in the box because then the steam is going to go on the ceiling and then that's going to create ice on the ceiling. Then every time we go on defrost, that's going to start dripping on the floor. Then we're going to have water on the floor, which is going to turn into ice. Okay, so that's why we have a defrost termination. So if our coil gets to our set point, which will probably be 55 on this one, once it gets to that temperature, um, it wants to make sure we come out of defrost. So it's possible um, that we come out of defrost after 10 minutes if our coil's not frosting up. We don't want the full 45 minutes. And then also, now our product is not being cooled for 45 minutes. So that's why it's really important that we have this defrost termination wired in. All right, and the last thing we want to do is we want to set the time on the clock. So this is super important because sometimes you have intermittent failures on these defrost clocks. So if you set it to the exact time of day, so 1 p.m. or whatever, in this case it's 3 p.m., if we come back another time and it's off by like eight, nine, 10 hours, we know this thing is stopping intermittently. So make sure you're setting your defrost.